delicious sayas. Today, let's dissect the lobster. Lobsters are marine crustaceans with a hard exoskeleton. The exoskeleton of a lobster provides protection to its soft flesh. But as it grows, the exoskeleton becomes constricting. Therefore, lobsters need to undergo periodic molting to shed their old exoskeleton. However, molting in the wild is a highly risky behavior. The freshly molted lobster's exoskeleton is soft, making it vulnerable to predators, and it also requires significant energy expenditure. Therefore, after molting, lobsters need to consume their exuvium to replenish nutrients. Molting is repeated by lobsters dozens of times until they die. Lobsters are known to die when they can no longer molt, rather than simply growing old. The life of lobsters, where they must take risks for growth, is similar to the lives of human beings. Now, let's start observing the body of a lobster. First, a lobster has a cephalothrax, which is a combination of the head and thorax, covered by carapace. And below that is the abdomen, the body of a lobster is composed of segments and can flex and extend in this way. Lobsters belong to the decapoda, like shrimp and crabs, and they particularly share strong similarities with shrimp. Like shrimp, lobsters also have a rostrum and two pairs of antenna. One notable difference from shrimp is the large claws in lobsters. The two claws of lobsters have different shapes from each other. The blunt claw is called the crusher claw, which is used to crush hard prey, while the slender and sharp claw is known as the pincer claw, which serves the purpose of cutting food. Lobsters have incredibly strong claw strength, so we should always be careful. If you flip a lobster and look at the underside, you will notice that there are 10 legs on the thorax region. The two pairs of legs underneath the claws are also considered walking legs, which are primarily used for walking along the seafloor. However, besides the ten legs, lobsters have numerous appendages. At the mouth region, lobsters have maxillips, which they use along with their claws to feed on food. Furthermore, if you look at the abdomen, you can see the swimming legs. Lobsters use their swimming legs for swimming, and they also use them to carry and incubate eggs until they hatch. Moreover, at the posterior end of the body, you can observe the presence of a tail called the telson, and four tail fan-like structures known as your pods. Lobsters can rapidly swim by flexing and extending their abdomen while using their uropods like oars in emergency situations. The anus is in the telson of a lobster. This is the spot. Now, let's dissect the lobster to observe its internal anatomy. Firstly, the internal organs of the lobster are mostly located within the cephalothrax. Therefore, let's carefully cut and open the carapace of the cephalothrax. Once the carapace is open, removing the membranes, you can see the internal organs like this. On the sides of the cephalothrax, you will find the gills. The gills are connected to the legs, so the legs move, the gills also move, increasing the contact between the water and the gills. And if you look at the upper part, you can observe the lobster's heart. Underneath the heart, the gonads of the lobster are located. But unfortunately, it seems that we weren't able to observe them clearly. And above the heart, there is the hepatopancreas, which functions as a digestive gland in lobsters. The hepatopancreas and gonads of lobsters are often regarded as tasty food, called tomali. However, the hepatopancreas of crustaceans can accumulate environmental contaminants, including toxins such as paralytic shellfish toxins. Therefore, it is recommended to avoid excessive consumption of lobster tomali to minimize potential health risks. And this part at the head is the stomach, which is connected to the intestine. Intestine extends towards the tail region of the lobster. If you cut the stomach and remove it, you will be able to observe the esophagus. Next, if you remove the stomach and cut it open, inside the stomach, we can see the seaweed or algae that the lobster ingested. 
you will be able to see some fascinating structures inside. Surprisingly, inside the lobster's stomach, you will find teeth-like structures. Lobsters have three sets of teeth inside their stomach, allowing them to further grind and chew their food as it passes through the digestive system. As the finely fragmented food passes through the stomach, it is transported through the intestine towards the tail. To observe the intestine, the cephalothrax is removed, and the abdominal exoskeleton is opened to extract the lobster's abdominal muscles. By splitting open the upper part, you can observe that the intestine extends to the anus, connecting the stomach to the rectum. After removing the intestine and dissecting the muscles, you can observe the ventral nerve cord, which runs along the underside of the abdomen. This ventral nerve cord extends to the brain. Lastly, when you place the lobster claws in hot water, you can observe that they turn red in color. The presence of a pigment, called the staxanthin inside the lobster's exoskeleton, causes it to exhibit a reddish color when exposed to heat. So while most lobster species have a dark brown coloration, the cooked lobsters that we enjoy as food have a familiar bright red appearance. This is the end of the lobster's anatomy. I gave the deliciously cooked lobster to Sebastian. Of course, I didn't expect him to eat it. But I wonder if Alexandria would like lobster. If you enjoyed, please subscribe.